Welcome to Storytime. I'm so glad you're here listening to stories. My name is Evelyn and we are going to get going. Did you guys bring your hands? Got mine. All right, let's get our rhythm going. Ready? Boing, boing, squeak. Boing, boing, squeak. There's a story in my house. It's been about a week. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's been. I don't know. Where did it go? I want to hear it again. I look to my left. I look to my right. I look all around. It's still out of sight. I look on the ground and over my head. <gasps> There's something in my bed. Let's see what it is today. It's a banana. Is that right? No, it's not a banana. I was just joking. It's a carrot. Is that right? No, it's a apple. It's an apple. Apples are great. Can you think of something you can make with apples? Mm. Maybe apple pie, or applesauce, apple juice, apple crumble. There are so many good things you can make with apples, or you can just eat them because they're very good. And today we have stories all about apples. So our first story is about apple pie, and it comes from this book by Anne Wellington called Apple Pie. Well, once upon a time, there was an apple tree. It grew the biggest, whoops, most delicious apples ever. They were so yummy. It grew in Mr. Bingle's yard. And Mr. Bingle loved apples. He would pick those apples and he would make tasty, tasty apple pie. He would pick one. He would cover it in pastry. He'd bake it till it was golden brown. He would sprinkle sugar on top and then some cream. He would eat it mm, and say, ah, perfectly delicious. Well, he did this every day during apple season until there was only one apple left. Well, that apple looked so good, but Mr. Bingle had a problem. It was up very high, and he could not reach it. He tried and tried. Oh, he stretched as high as he can. Ah! Ugh, but he couldn't reach it. He said, botheration. That enormous, juicy apple is growing far too high. How will I ever put it in a pie? Hmm. Well, he thought and thought. And then he got out his stool. He thought maybe if he stood on his stool, he would be able to get a little bit closer. So he did. But no matter how hard he stretched, he still couldn't reach that apple. So he said, botheration. That juicy apple is growing much too high. How will I ever put it in a pie? Hmm. Well, the nice lady who lived next door heard what was going on, and she came over to see if she could help. When he explained what was happening, she said, Hmm, well, perhaps you could borrow my flower pot, and maybe that would help. Okay, he said. So he put the stool and then the flower pot, and he stood on top of those. But he still couldn't reach that apple. Botheration! That juicy apple is much too high. However, will I put it in a pie? Hmm. Well, just then, who should come along but a very friendly rabbit with a puffy tail. And the rabbit said, You could borrow my hutch if you wanted. Hmm, said the man. All right, thank you. So he stood on 
the stool. On top of that was the flower pot. On top of that was the hutch. On top of that was Mr. Bingle. But he still could not reach that apple. Botheration! That juicy apple is much too high. However will I put it in a pie? Just then, along came a cat. Meow! The cat looked and said, Hmm, you could use my basket. Maybe that would work. So, Mr. Bingle had the stool. He had, on top of that stool, was the flower pot from the woman next door, the hutch from the rabbit, the basket from the cat, and then Mr. Bingle. And yet, he still could not reach that apple. Botheration! That juicy apple is much too high. However will I put it in a pie? But just then, along came a mouse. Squeak, squeak! The mouse said, Oh, I see what the problem is. You have the stool on the bottom. You need to put the stool on the top, and then it'll work better. Okay? No, said Mr. Bingle, not okay. I'm standing up here. If you take the stool out, I'll fall. The mouse said, that's the only way to do it. All right, let's all work together. So the mouse started to pull the stool. The cat pulled the mouse. The rabbit pulled the cat. And the nice woman from next door pulled the rabbit. They pulled and pulled. Ah, said Mr. Bingle, what is going to happen to me? They pulled until, oh, they pulled that stool out. Well, I bet you can guess what happened. Down came the flower pot. Down came the hutch. Down came the basket. And oomph, down crashed Mr. Bingle. But just then, the tree shook from the big crash, and the apple fell down. <gasps> well. Mr. Bingle was so excited to get that apple. He took it home. He put on his nicest red apron to bake in. He covered that apple in pastry. He sprinkled it with sugar. He put on some cream. Mm, he baked it in the oven till it was nice and toasty. And you know what? Because it had been such an enormous apple, that apple pie was big enough for the woman next door and the helpful rabbit and the cat with the basket and the clever mouse to all share. The end. All right. Well, let's see. Let's do a little rhyme. Can you get out your hands? All right, ready? Pick an apple. You pull your hand in like this. Pick an apple. Eat it up. Save the core. Plant it. And grow some more. Should we do that again? Pick an apple. Eat it up. Save the core. And grow some more. Good job. All right. This book is called The Terrible Plot. And this is by Ursula Duboskarski. Six little rabbits down by the lake munching on carrots and chocolate cake. Mm, that looks yummy. Next to the lake, in a tree up high, a round red apple swings in the sky. Soft is the wind and the tree bends low. The round red apple is all aglow. Suddenly comes a terrible plop. Up jump the rabbits. Hop, hop, hop. They shout to each other. Run, don't stop. We must get away from that terrible plop. Looks like they're going away in such a hurry that even their cake and carrots are going flying.
Wait, little rabbits, call the fox as they pass. Where are you hopping to so very fast? But the rabbits cry back, we cannot stop. We must get away from the terrible flop. Terrible flop, thinks the fox in fear. Maybe I'd better get out of here. Goodbye, friend monkey. I cannot stop. I must go away from the terrible plop. He runs with the rabbits, the monkey and the cat, the pig and the elephant, the tiger and the bat. Soon all the animals, one by one, out of the forest, they come at a run. Out comes the leopard, out comes the goose, out comes the antelope, out comes the moose. They do not stay, they do not stop, they run, run, run from the terrible plop. At last they come to the big brown bear, sunning himself in a folding chair. What's this, says the big brown bear with a frown. Where are you running to? Stop, slow down. No, no, brown bear, we cannot stop. We must get away from the terrible plop. The terrible plop, what do I care about a silly old plop, yawns the big brown bear. Oh, no, brown bear, they cry, you're wrong. The plop is fierce, the plop is strong. It's coming to get us, it's coming, you'll see. What, growls the brown bear, stronger than me? And he grabs with his paw at the one coming last, the littlest rabbit who's not yet very fast. The littlest rabbit with the littlest hop, but the greatest fear of the terrible plop. Now, little rabbit, you show me where is the place of the plop, snarls the big brown bear. Oh, please, big bear, don't make me go. I'm very afraid of the plop, you know. Afraid of the plop, you show me where, or I'll eat you up, roars the big brown bear. Poor little rabbit, blink, blink, blink. Poor little rabbit, think, think, think. I'm afraid of the plop, I'm afraid of the bear. But the bear is here, and the plop is there. Brave little rabbit, hop, 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 back to the lake. And the terrible plop, big brown bear, slowly comes to a stop. So where, says the bear? is this terrible plop. The sun is soft, the water is still, an evening wind rolls down from the hill. Tall and dark stands the brown bear, dark and strong with his nose in the air. Next to the lake, in a tree up high, a round red apple swings in the sky. Suddenly comes a terrible plop, but this time the rabbit does not hop. The wind rolls down from the top of the hill, but this time the littlest rabbit sits still and turns to speak to the big brown bear, but the big brown bear is not there. The rabbit calls out to the big brown bear, where are you going to bear, oh where? The bear cries back with his foot. I cannot stop! Quick, it's coming! The terrible plop! One little rabbit down by the lake, happily munching on chocolate cake. All this running should really stop. Who's afraid of a silly old plop? The end. And it was just an apple falling in the water the whole time, but they were so afraid. All right, can you show me your hands? Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, slowly creep them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open up your little mouth, ah, but do not let them in. Shake them, shake them, shake, shake, shake them, shake them just like this. 
Roll them, roll them, roll, roll, roll them. Blow a little kiss. Mwah. Good job. All right. Well, for our next thing we're going to do, I bet that a lot of you know the song Bingo. B-I-N-G-O. That one. Well, we're going to do that song, but we're going to do it with an apple instead. That's what we're going to sell. I mean, sing. <laughs> All right. So, can you spell the word apple? I'll help you. It starts with an A. And then a P. And then another P. Then an L, and finally an E. The spell board I have here is smaller than the ones we have at the library, so I'll have to be part of the spell board too. All right, so can you sing with me? It goes like this. There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. The eat. Oh my gosh, I have to start over. Can you guys shake out your mouths like that? All right, and we lost our E. Ready? There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. An apple is its name. O A P P L E A P P L E A P P L E. An apple is its name. Well, now, don't you know, we have to hum, take a big bite. Ready? Can you take that bite? Hum. I'll put that one up here, and I'll move the other ones over so you can see a little better. Okay, so now, you know, in bingo, you clap. In this one, we're gonna go, although you can also clap if you want to. Ready? There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. An apple is its name. Oh, P-P-L-E, 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 and apple is its name. Oh, now let's get rid of another letter. There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. An apple is its name. Oh, P L E, P L E, P L E. An apple is its name. Oh, all right. There goes that P. There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. An apple is its name. Oh, L E, L E. Um, um, L E, an apple is its name. Oh, ready to take another bite? Um. There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. An apple is its name. Oh, um, 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 E, hum, 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 E, hum, 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 E, an apple is its name. Oh, one more bite. Um. There is a fruit that's sweet to eat. An apple is its name. Oh, an apple is its name. Oh, good job. I wonder, did you guys feel a little silly doing that? You know, I always say that I never look silly doing anything because I'm a grown up, and grown ups never look silly. We always look serious, right? All right, well, this song doesn't have anything to do with apples, but I think it's fun. So if you've been sitting down and you feel wiggly, why don't you go ahead and stand on up and let's sing the pirate song. When I was one, I sucked my thumb on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was two, I tied my shoe on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was three, I tapped my knee on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. 
When I was four, I shut the door. On the day I went to sea, I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was five, I jumped and jived on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. Good job, everybody. All right, you can go ahead and sit back down and get at your fingers again. I have 10 fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do stuff. Want to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them quietly and sit just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can fold them all together. I can make them all high. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them all together and sit just so. Well, our last story is a story about a little girl. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who said, I'm bored. I'm tired. I don't want to swing anymore or play with any of my toys and there's nobody to play with. What can I do? She went to her mother and her mother said, hmm, want to go on a hunt? Why don't you go down the road and see if you could find a house that is red and round. It does not have a door or any windows, but inside there's a star. Hmm, said the little girl. Okay. So, she went out the door and down the road until she saw a boy gathering nuts from the ground. She said, do you know about a little red round house with no doors and no windows, but it has a star on the inside? The little boy said, no, but you could ask my father. He's out back feeding the lambs. He knows a lot of things. So the little girl went to his father. Hello, she said. I'm looking for a little round red house. It does not have any windows and it does not have a door, but it does have a star inside. Have you seen that? Hmm, said the man. No, I haven't. But you could ask Grandmother Gray. She knows just about everyone and everything for miles around. She lives in the yellow house right over there. Well, the little girl walked over. Ah. <sighs> Grandmother Gray, she said, do you know where there is a little red round house with no windows and no doors? Mother says there's one nearby, but it also has a star on the inside this house. Grandmother Gray said, let me think. No, I don't know, but you know wind blows here and there and everywhere, and I bet if anyone knows it's wind, you should ask wind. Well, the little girl left and she called out, Wind, are you around? Wind? And wind came whooshing down. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Do you guys want to make that sound with me? Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The wind pushed her and she chased the wind down through the apple orchard. She said, Wind, wind, have you heard of a house that is round and red with no doors and no windows but a star inside? And wind said, Whoosh, whoosh and then blew whoosh, an apple out of the tree, landed right at the girl's feet. <gasps> hmm, thought the girl. She picked it up and looked at it. It was small and round and red. It did not have any doors or any windows. She took it and she ran home to her mother. She said, Mama, is this what you were talking about? Look what I found. Mama said, Hmm, let's see. It's round and red. It does not have any doors or windows. Let's see if there's a star inside. And to see if there was a star inside, she got out a cutting board and a knife, and she sliced that apple in half. When she had cut it in half, she showed the girl, there is that star. And look, it's 
got one here too. Wow, said the girl, this is the house. All right, said the mama, now we can have a snack. The end. And I just love that about apples. If you cut them this way, you don't see the star. But if you cut them this way through the core, you can see the core is in the shape of a star. It's just a neat special surprise, I think, that apples have. Well, you guys have been great listeners. Now we are at that time where if you're standing up, go ahead and sit back down. And we are going to dance. So I want you to stay sitting down until you hear the magic words. Knees up. And then you can get up and dance. All right. There was a chicken from France who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down. Well, apples are good to eat. They're red and very sweet. Also, sometimes they're green or yellow. The only other thing that they can do is knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down. Robot would just like to say thanks for listening to stories today. The only other thing that she can do is knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Beep, boop, boop, boop. Knees up, Mother Brown. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Faster. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Woo! Wiggle, wiggle fingers right up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers, wave them all goodbye. Thank you for listening to stories today. I'm so happy that you joined us here. You can find out more about our story times and other stuff at AADL TV by liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.